Helga Kvitha, Hundingsbana 2 The second lay of Helgi Hundingsbane As the general nature of the Helgi tradition has been considered in the introductory note to Helga Kvitha Hjarvartstonar, it is necessary to discuss only the characteristics of this particular poem. The second Helgi Hundingsbane lay is, in, in most respects, the exact opposite of the first one. It is in no sense consecutive, and it is not a narrative poem, and all or most of it gives evidence of relatively early composition, its origin probably going well back into the 10th century. It is frankly nothing but a piece of, in the main, very clumsy patchwork, made up of eight distinct fragments pieced together awkwardly by the annotator with copious prose notes. One of these fragments, stanzas 13 through 16, is specifically identified as coming from the Old Volsungle. What was that poem, and how much more of the extant Helgi Lay compilation was taken from it, and did the annotator know more of it than he included in this patchwork? Conclusive answers to these questions have baffled scholarship, and probably always will do so. My own guess is that the annotator knew little or nothing more than he wrote down. Having got the first Helgi Hundingsbane, which was obviously in fairly good shape, out of the way, he proceeded to assemble all the odds and ends of verse about Helgi which he could get a hold of, putting them together on the basis of the narrative told in the first Helgi Lay, and of such stories as his knowledge of prose sagas may have yielded. Section 1, stanzas 1-4, through four, deals with the early adventures of Helgis, in which he narrowly escapes capture when he ventures into Hunding's home in disguise. Section 2, stanzas 5-12, through 12, is a dialogue between Helgi and Sigrun at their first meeting. Section 3, stanzas 13-16, through 16, the old Volsungle group, is another dialogue between Helgi and Sigrun, when she invokes his aid to save her from Hothbrod. Section 4, stanzas 17 through 20, which may well have been from the same poem as Section 3, is made up of speeches by Helgi and Sigrun after the battle in which Hothbrod was killed. Stanza 21, however, is certainly an interpolation from another poem, as it is a totally different me meter. Section 5, stanzas 22 through 27, is the dispute between Sinfjolti and Gothmund, evidently, in an older form than the one included in the first Helgi Hundingsbane lay. Section 7, stanzas 28 through 37, gives Dog's speech to his sister, Sigrun, telling of Helgi's death, her curse on her brother, and her lament for her slain husband. Section 7, stanza 38, is the remnant of the dispute between Helgi and Hunding, here inserted absurdly out of place. Section 8, stanzas 39 through 50, deals with the return of the dead Helgi and Sigrun's visit to him in the burial hill. Siemens maintains that sections 1 and 2 are fragments of the Kara Lay mentioned by the annotator in his concluding prose note and the sections 4, 6, and 8 are from a lost Helgi Sigrun poem, while sections 3 comes from, of course, from the old Volsung Lay. This seems as good as guess as any other, conclusive proof being quite out of the question. Were it not for sections 6 and 8, the poem would be little more than a battleground for scholars, but those two sections are in many ways as fine as anything in Old Norse poetry. Sigrun's curse of her brother for the slaying of Helgi and her lament for her dead husband, and the extraordinary vividness of the final scene in the burial hill have a quality which fully offsets the baffling confusion of the rest of the poem. Helgaskvitha, Hundingsbana 2 King Sigmund, the son of Volsung, had as a wife Broghild from Braland, they named their son Helgi after Helgi Hjorvas' son. Hagel was Helgi's foster father. Hunding was the name of a powerful king, and Hunland is named from him. He was a mighty warrior and had many sons with him on his campaigns. 
there is enmity and strife between these two, King Hunding and King Sigmund, and each slew the other's kinsmen. King Sigmund and his father were called Volsungs and Ilfings. Helgi went as a spy to the home of King Hunding in disguise. Heiming, a son of King Hunding, was at home. When Helgi went forth, then he met a young herdsman and said, Say to Heiming that Helgi knows whom the heroes in armor hid. A grey wolf had they within their hall, whom King Hunding Hamel thought. Hamel was the name of Hargo's son. King Hunding sent men to Hargo to help seek Helgi, and Helgi could not save himself in any other way, so he put on the clothes of a bondwoman and set to work at the mill. They sought Helgi, but found him not. Then Blin spake out, the evil-minded, of Hargul's bondwoman, bright are the eyes. Yon comes not of churls, who stand at the quern. The millstones break, the boards are shattered. The hero has a doomful heart, that barley now he needs be grind. Better befits his hand to feel the hilt of the sword in the millstones handle. Hagel answered and said, Small is the wonder if boards are splintered, by a monarch's daughter the mill is turned. Once through clouds she was wont to ride, and battles fought like fighting men, till Helgi a captive held her fast. Sister she was of Sigar and Hogni, thus brighter the eyes of the Ilfing's maid. Helgi escaped and went to the fighting ship. He slew King Hunding, and thenceforth was called Helgi Hunding's Bane. He lay with his host in Brunavagar, and they had there a strand slaughtering, and ate the flesh raw. Hogni was the name of a king, his daughter was Sigrun. She was a Valkyrie and rode air and water. She was Svava born. Sigrun rode to Helgi's ship and said, who rules the ship by the shore so steep? Where is the home ye warriors have? Why do you bid in Brunavagar? Or what the way that ye wish to try? Helgi spake, Hummels the ship by the shore so steep. Our home in Hlesi do we have. For fair wind bid we in Brunavagar, eastward the way that we wish to try. Sigrun spake, Where hast thou, warrior, battle weakened, or gorge the birds of the sisters of Guth? Why is thy burny spattered with blood? Why helm so does feast, uncooked on food? Helgi spake, Latest of all the Ilfing's son on the western sea, if no thou wilt, captured bears in Bragalund, and fed the eagles with edge of sword. Now is it shown why our shirts are bloody, and little our food where fire is cooked. Sigrun spake, Of battle thou tellest, and there was bent, hounding the king before Helgi down. There was carnage when thou didst avenge thy kin, and blood flowed fast on the blade of the sword. Helgi spake, how didst thou know that now our kin, maiden wise, we have well avenged? Many there are of the sons of the mighty, who share alike our ofty race. Sigrun spake, Not far was I from the lord of the folk, yester morn when the monarch was slain. Though crafty the son of Sigmund, methinks, when he speaks of the fight in slaughter rooms. On the long ship once I saw thee well, when the blood-stained bow thou wast, and around the icy waves were raging. Now would the hero hide from me, but to Hogni's daughter is Helgi known. Granmar was the name of a mighty king who dwelt at Svarin's hill. He had many sons, one was named Hothbrod, another Gothmund, a third Starkoth. 
Hothbrod was in a king's meeting, and he won the promise of having Sigrun, Hogni's daughter, for his wife. But when she heard this, she rode with the Valkyries over air and sea to seek Helgi. Helgi was then at Logafjol and had fought with Hunding's sons. There he killed Alf and Eyjolf, Hjorvarth and Hervarth. He was all weary with battle and sat under the eagle stone. There Sigrun found him and ran to throw her arms about his neck and kissed him and told him of her tidings, as is set forth in the old Volsung Lay. Sigrun the Joyful, chieftain sought, forth with Helgi's hand she took. She greeted the hero, helmed and kissed him. The warrior's heart to the woman turned. From her heart the daughter of Hogni spake. Dear with Helgi, she said to her, Long with all my heart I loved, Sigmund's son, ere ever I saw him. At the meeting to Hothbrod mated I was, but another hero I fain would have. Though king the wrath of my kin I fear, since I broke my father's fairest wish. Helgi spake, Fear not ever Hogni's anger, not yet thy kinsman's cruel wrath. Maiden thou with me shall live, thy kindred fair one I shall not fear. Helgi then assumed a great sea host and went to Thrakestein. On the sea he met a perilous storm. Lightning flashed overhead and the bolt struck the ship. They saw in the air that nine Valkyries were riding and recognized Sigrun among them. Then the storm abated and they came safe and sound to land. Grandmar's son sat at a certain mountain as the ship sailed towards the land. Gothman leaped on a horse and rode for news to a promontory near the harbour. The Volsungs were leaving there, lowing their sails. Then Gothman said, as is written before in the Helgi Lay, Who is the king whose captains the fleet, and to the land the warriors lead? Sinfjotli, Sigmund's son, answered him, and then that too is written. Gothman rode home with his tidings of the host. Then Granmar's son summoned an army. Many kings came there. There were Hogni, Sigrun's father, and his sons Bragi and Dog. There was a great battle, and all Granmar's sons were slain, and all their allies. Only Dog, Hogni's son, was spared, and he swore loyalty to the Volsungs. Sigrun went among the dead and found Hothbrod at the coming of death. She said, Never shall Sigrun from Sevafjol, Hothbrod king, be held in thine arms. Grandmar's sons full cold have grown, and the giant steeds grey on corpses gorge. Then sought she out Helgi, and was full of joy. He said, Maid not fair is all thine fortune, the Norris I blame for this should be. This morn there fell a Thrakestin, Bragi and Hogni, beneath my hand. And Helbjörg fell the sons of Zrolong, Starkath the king at Styrklefjar. Fighters more noble never I saw. The body fought when the head had fallen. On the ground full low the slain are lying, most are there of the men of thy race. Not hast thou won, for thy fate it was, brave men to bring to the battlefield. Then Sigrun wept. Helgi said, Grieve not, Sigrun, the battle is gained. The fighter can shun not his fate. Sigrun spake, To life would I call them who slaughtered lie, if safe on thy breast I might be. This Gothmund, the son of Granmar, spoke. What hero great is guiding the ships? A golden flag on the stem he flies. I find not peace in the van of your firing, 
and round the fighters is battle like the red. Sin shortly spake. Here now may half-broad Helgi find, the hater of flight in the midst of the fleet. The home of all thy race he has, and over the realm of the fishes he rules. Gothman spake. First shall swords at Threkestein prove our worth in the place of words. Time is it, Hothbrod, vengeance to have, if in battle worsted once we were. Since Hjotli spake, Batter Gothman to tender goats, and climb the rocks of the mountain cliffs, a hazel switch to hold in thy hand. Must seemingly wear thou hilt of the sword. Helgi spake, Better send Fjotli, thee toward the seam, Battles to give and eagles to gladden, Then vain and empty speech to utter, The warriors oft with words do strive. Good I find not the sons of Granmar, But for heroes to seemly the truth to speak, and Moin Shima prove the men that hearts for the wielding of swords they had, and ever brave the warriors are. Helgi took Sigrun to wife, and they had sons. Helgi did not reach old age. Dag, the son of Hogni, offered sacrifice to Odin to be avenged for his father's death. Odin gave Dag his spear. Dag found Helgi, his brother-in-law, at a place which is called Fjordtorund. He thrust the spear through Helgi's body. Then Helgi fell, and Dag rode to Sevafjord, and told Sigrun the tidings. Sada, my sister, sorrow to tell thee. Woe to my kin, unwilling I worked. In the morn there fell at Fjordtorund, the noblest prince the world has ever known, and his heel he sets on the hero's necks. Sigrun spake, Now may ever oath thee bite, that with Helgi sworn thou hast, by the water bright of Lept, and the ice cold stone of Urth. The ship shall not sail, in which thou sailest, Thou a favouring wind shall follow after. The horse shall not run whereon thou ridest, Though fain thou art thy foe to flee. The sword shall not bite which thou bearest, Till thy head itself it sings about. Vengeance were mine for Helgi's murder, Wert thou a wolf in the woods without. Possessing not and knowing no joy, having no food save corpses to feed on. Dog spake, Mad art thou, sister, and wild of mind, such a curse on thy brother to cast. Odin is ruler of every ill, who sunders kin with runes of spite. Thy brother rings so red would give thee, Alvandil Siv and Vigdalir. Take half my land to pay the harm, ring decked maid, and as mead for thy sons. Sigrun spake, I shall sit not happy at Sevafjall, early or late, my life to love, if the light cannot show in the leader's bond, Vigblier, bearing him back to his home. The golden bitted, I shall greet him never. Such the fear that Helgi's foes ever felt in all their kin, As makes the goats with terror mad run from the wolf among the rocks. Helgi rose above heroes all, Like the lofty ash above lowly thorns, Or the noble stag with dew besprinkled, Bearing his head above all beasts, And his horns gleam bright to heaven itself. A hill was made in Helgi's memory, and when he came to Valhall, then Odin bade him rule over everything with himself. 
Helgi said, Thou shalt, Hunding, of every hero, wash the feet and kindle the fire, tie up dogs and tin the horses, and feed the swine ere to sleep thou goest. One of Sigrun's maidens went one evening to Helgi's hill, and saw that Helgi rode to the hill with many men. The maiden said, Is this a dream that methinks I see, or the doom of the gods that dead men ride, and hither spurring urged your steeds, or is homecoming now to the heroes granted? Helgi spake, No dream is this, that thou thinkest to see, nor the end of the world thou us beholdest. And hither spurring we urge our steeds, nor is homecoming now to the heroes granted. The maiden went home and said to Sigrun, Go forth, Sigrun, from Sevafjall, if fain the lord of the folk was to find. The hill is open, Helgi is come. The sword tracks bleed the monarch bay that thou his wounds shouldst now make well. Sigrun went in the hill to Helgi and said, Now am I glad of our meeting together, as Odin's hawks so eager for prey. When slaughter and flesh shall warm they scent, or do what see the red of day. First will I kiss the lifeless king, ere off the bloody burning thou cast. With frost thy hair is heavy, Helgi, and damp thou art with the dew of kith. Ice cold hands has Hogni's kinsman. What prince can I to ease thee bring? Helgi spake, Thou alone, Sigrun of Sevafjall. Art's cause that Helgi would do is heavy. Gold-decked maid, thy tears are grievous. Sun-bright south maid, ere thou sleepest. Each falls like blood on the hero's breast. Burned out, cold, and crushed with care. Well shall we drink a noble draught. The love and lands are lost to me. No man a song of sorrow shall sing, though bleeding wounds are on my breast. Now in the hill our brides we hold, the heroes loves by their husbands dead. Sigrun made ready a bed in the hill. Here a bed I've made for thee, Helgi, to rest thee from care, thou kin of the ear things. I will make thee sink to sleep in my arms, as once I lay with the living king. Helgi spake. Now do I say that in Sevafjall aught may happen early or late. Since thou sleepest clasped in corpses' arms so fair in a hill, the daughter of Hogni. Living thou comest to daughter of kings. Now must I ride the reddened ways, and my bay steed set to tread the sky. Westward I go to Windhelm's bridges, ere Solgofnir wakes the warrior throng. Then Helgi and his followers rode on their way, and the women went home to the dwelling. Another evening Sigrun bade the maiden keep watch at the hill. And at sunset, when Sigrun went to the hill, she said, Now where he come, if come he might, Sigmund's son from Odin's seat. Hope grows dim of the hero's return, when eagles sit on the ash tree boughs, and men are seeking the meeting of dreams. The maiden said, Mad thou wast seem alone to seek, daughter of heroes, the house of the dead. They're mightier now, at night are all, the ghosts of the dead, than when day is bright. Sigrun was early dead of sorrow and grief. It was believed in olden times that people were born again. 
but that is now called Old Wives' Folly. Of Hergi and Sigrun it is said that they were born again. He became Hergi Haringskjati, and she Kara, the daughter of Hafdan. As is told in the Lay of Kara, and she was a Valkyrie. 